What's up, weirdos? We need to have a very serious and honest conversation about the atrocity that is Dilf Manor. You might remember a little bit ago, I made a video about the first episode, and I thought that was gonna be it. I'll just, you know, make a video about the first thing, and that's it. What's up, guys? My name's Tony Cannoli, and I'm from New Jersey, and I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> we already did, like, the whole follow-along every episode of Milf Manor, and I didn't want to do that again. But I thought, you know, it might be good to go back and see the finale and check in on how our old pal Tony Cannoli's doing. <laughs> if you missed that episode, it's fine, but his name is actually Tony Cannoli. He behaves like a cartoon character of a theater kid who's excited because he got an understudy role in Aladdin. Just a walking bank of meme viral moment potential. Not only wears a jockstrap, but he has a sense of humor. <laughs> Sign me up. <coughs> he took over the entire first episode and that became what my entire video was about. He is a king of reality TV. But when I looked at the finale, this is what I saw. <laughs> Those two sides are divided by who's in the finale and who got voted off earlier. So imagine my surprise when I found out Tony Cannoli was voted off. <laughs> and it gets worse than that. But first of all, let me just start by saying, if you have somebody who is that incredible, that like perfect for reality TV, and you don't feature them heavily in the season, if you don't script it so that they stay in the show and people would say oh but reality tv shouldn't be scripted but you should at least have the best characters on your show not get voted out immediately so i went back to the episode before the finale because maybe it was like oh some big thing where oh tony cannoli got voted off before the finale he wasn't even in that episode he got voted off in the middle of the season which means no cannoli moments not only wears a jock strap but he has a sense of humor and beyond that when i went back and looked at the episodes that led up to him getting voted off he's Barely even featured in them. So I want to go back and take a look at the entire season to see what Dilf Manor did wrong because they definitely f***ed up. So let's start by taking a look back at episode two. But before we do that, where are my gay women at? I just got back from boxing. I wanted to record this when I was in my most ten bucks. I wanted to be in the last daddy standing. Real quick, I love the contrast, by the way, between this and other like, you know, Milf Manor, Love Island. And those ones, they're like this isolated island with beaches all around them. And this one, they're just like in a neighborhood. <laughs> Now, in episode two, the first appearance of the greatest character in this show is halfway in. Like, we'll see him in a wide shot every now and then, but we don't have, like, a scene about him, as we so should throughout this entire show, until halfway through. But now, let's see what he does with the time he's given. The most handsome player to lose. <laughs> wow, thanks. That was nice. I'm nice. nice. No, I'm full nice of it. Hit. I'm full of it. <laughs> so what's going on? Do you see what I mean? <laughs> he just captivates the camera. He draws you in. He's insane. He's not a real person and he's so perfect for this show. <laughs> wow, thanks. The fact that they just let him fall through the cracks is a 9-11 level tragedy. <laughs> I don't I'm know. full of surprises. <laughs> <laughs> so before I took a shower, I saw Alex playing pool and there's been something on my mind. His, his interviews are some of the greatest reality TV interviews I've ever seen. Nobody else would ever talk to the camera like that. I saw Alex playing pool and there's been something on my mind. In his mind, there's like this backing track of orchestral music. He's talking to Jessica Chastain. He's delivering a performance trying to get an Oscar, but it's just talking to a camera about bullshit. A real person would say, there's been something on my mind. Tony Cannoli says, there's been something on my mind. And that is why he should be the focus of the show. Are you with me? Let's keep going. This is coming from a place of love because I really, I really oh boy. do. No, 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 no. <laughs> what? I really, I really do like you. I just, I just. What? I what? just feel like we need to have a conversation tonight. And then please, please know that this is just, it's like, it's my heart talking. I, I'm not built for this. Okay. All right. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Shower up, my friend. <laughs> it's going to be okay. He is so weird. He is so like like inhumanly weird and seeing him interact with people who are just like just a regular person on a reality show his daddy right there not his actual daddy but just you know his daddy his daddy is just like regular. oh my god you know what it's like you know what it's like he's like the prince from enchanted that's who that's who tony is i've been dreaming oh. it's like he's jumped out of this cartoon world and the, everybody around him is like what the hell is going on because <laughs> who approaches a situation like that hey there's just something we need to talk about and know that it comes from a place of... And the guy's like, uh, what? Can you just tell me now? What's going on? We need to have the conversation later, but don't worry. It's it's all gonna be okay. Oh, could you just say? Shower up, my friend. <laughs> what the hell was that? How do you end a conversation with shower up, my friend? <laughs> and like all of that, all of that. I, I could talk about this scene for ages and it's barely. And the producers see this and they chose to make him a side character. Cause now we have to go all the way to the end of the episode when they're having this conversation between each other. But there's no, there's no like interviews ahead of time. There's nothing after it. It's not, it's just, they have that conversation there for like three minutes and then they have their conversation here for a little bit. And that's the whole, there's nothing else from it. That's why I'm making this video because he's the only person that matters. So my YouTube video here 
and the one before is the definitive Dilf Manor. Because it is the only one that centers the experience around Tony Cannoli. I think I still got a little bit of adrenaline from when I was boxing. Hey, if you know the people at the Creator Clash, could you just tell them to let me box? I've been, I've been getting good. Because people touch gloves before they fight, but me, I'm going like, I'm going like this. And then I'm going to swipe the arm down, BAM! Knockout! <clears throat> the only way I'm gonna let a man top me is if he can make me submit. Hey, yo! <laughs> Damn, there's Tupac again. Oh my God. I went to the beginning of the conversation, but it looks like I got a little bit of theirs. <laughs> the only way I'm gonna let a man top me is if he can make me some. West side, bad boy killers. Do you want to tell me something? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I, it's time to talk. You can't tell me right there, he's not James Marsden talking to Amy Adams in Enchanted. It's time to talk. Because if this isn't, I don't want to be with you, then what is it? Like, why would you say all that if it's not just going to be that? So why wouldn't you say that ahead of time? Like, why? Because he thought it made sense dramaturgically. Where are my gay women at who watch Succession? Where... <laughs> I love y'all. Thank you for putting up with me. Let's get into it. I really like you, Alex. I really do. And... But? You know, but... <laughs> no, it's just... When you, you, we were talking before and you were telling me, you know, what you do for work, and it's just completely different than what I do. And I come from a completely different world. I get it, I get it, I get it. But in that conversation you said, it's like a fairy tale. <laughs> With everything that I said, you're totally cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it sounds like a fairy tale. <laughs> so for people who don't know, his daddy right here is a sex worker who uh, does And he described it as, I make my living people. I make my entire living fucking people. And he was very upfront about that. He didn't want any drama, so we just told Tony Cannoli. <laughs> he told Tony Cannoli just right up front. I love his name so much. And just as he thought, here's the consequences. So what? We can't like fucking talk to no, each other no, now? No, no, I'm not. I'm not asking for you to change I, for the world. I'm. I, I want to help you change the world. Like, what? <laughs> he's just like. He's not real. <laughs> he basically says, "I'm uncomfortable with the fact that you do sex work for a living." Which is fine to say. You don't have to be okay with that. Like, it can be uncomfortable. It's fine. But then when it's like, okay, let's face this head on, he goes, I'm not asking for you to change I, for the world. I'm, I, I want to help you change the world. What does that mean, Tony Cannoli? He's a confusing man and he's my hero. <laughs> exactly. This stigma and this judgment, you know, and I, I kind of, I didn't know, but I don't want the world to change, Alex. What are, because then why are you having this conversation? I don't understand what you're saying. You're saying that it sucks that it has this stigma and that the world judges it, but then you are judging it. <laughs> you also feel negativity because of the stigma around it. You are also doing that. So it's like he's trying to watch the show before it gets out and he's trying to be this protagonist, this sweet, wonderful romantic lead. And the romantic lead of a show like this would never judge Alex for doing sex, work. but he does judge him. So he's judging him, but then saying the words of, I just don't want him to change. Like, <laughs> so weird. And that is why he should be in more of these episodes. It's just so fucking frustrating, man. Hey, I really like you, okay? I, I think maybe there's something here. Yeah, we come from two completely different worlds. I'm willing to learn more. So that's what the conversation was. <laughs> what the f was that? <laughs> the way he was talking to him before and how he opened up this conversation was, I'm going to break up with you. <laughs> That is exactly what his vibe was. And then the words he said were, I wanna help you change the world. What do you, you're the one who made the whole thing weird. You could have just, <laughs> like, like, you didn't have to say anything. You could have just been nice and loved him as he was, and that would have been great, but you made him do a thing, and then we're like, it's like he wanted more credit for not caring about it. I think that might actually be what it was. You think he went to bed the first night and was like, I don't feel like there was enough time spent on how good I am for not being mad at him for being a sex worker. Maybe there's a way that in the next episode, I can cause a problem and then solve it by saying you can change the world. <laughs> but that is Tony's entire screen time on episode two. Now, episode three is an even bigger tragedy. <laughs> I love how much I'm like, I just became self-aware of how much I'm caring about this. <laughs> that was fine, but episode three, bitch. <laughs> I don't know what is like going on, but like genuinely, this is the only thing that we get of him in episode three. They're playing two truths and a lie. And he says this. I've eaten a tarantula. I've been on a date with one guy from each 50 states. I hooked up with a guy who played Prince Charming at a certain theme park <laughs> in the bathroom <laughs> of said th certain theme park while he was working. Like that's a juicy moment. That's a that's such a juicy moment. Every single time he's on camera, it's a little, just like a little clip that I could play for eternity. And in the entire 50 minute episode, that's all we get of him. All, that entire storyline with him and Alex and like the sex worker thing, 
gone, dropped, nobody cares, until the very ending when they're voting people out, and he appears again. This show, like, the fact that they whiffed so hard on making this show is so frustrating. This show could have been my favorite of all time. I would watch a Tony Cannoli movie, and they put him on the sideline anyways, here. It is elimination time, and I'm all dressed up in my little onesie. I'm feeling confident. The sun's setting. There's kind of a storm in the distance, but I know nothing can win this night. And then everything changed. What? He's giving the monologue that a 12 year old on Tumblr would write in their fucking fan fiction about Harry Styles and a gooba. What is this, a fucking Larry fanfic? He's the greatest. He is the goat. Undisputable. I came to the house with an open heart and I don't think my heart is, uh, is healed. Alex basically shares that he has just recently entered sobriety and actually got uh, out of an engagement. I came out of an engagement eight months ago that fucking destroyed me. I entered sobriety six months ago. So he says that he has to bow out of the show completely, right before Tony was probably gonna say that he picks him. And Tony throughout this actually seems to be a little bit human, even though at a couple times he puts his hand over a heart like he is singing the national anthem. But it's tough, like the whole thing is actually pretty sad and you know, that's a very real moment in the show, and you know what, a nice little nugget. Wish this whole show had these nuggets, but they decided to cut out all the cool Tony Cannoli parts. <laughs> but all of that, you know, tragedy aside, what does Tony Cannoli do? I don't think you owe any of us an apology. I think what you've done tonight is incredibly brave. But not as brave as you coming out and sharing your truth about the President of the United States at the time and how he has an ugly little eener. It would be selfish of me to keep him. And I guess if you really, really like someone, you have to let him go. You cannot be serious, Tony. Oh my God, why is Tupac crying so much? West side. That's Lupita Nyong'o level. That right there is real emotion. And then you come back to Tony, who's sitting there portraying like he's crying, but his eyes have no water in them. His speech, it's like, how is that not written? You have to let him go. And it's not, because no reality TV writer would write something that's stupid. <laughs> Nothing could be as stupid as the genuine feelings coming out of Tony Cannoli's heart. It's like he was fed with cliches from an infancy, and that's all he knows how to spew out. If you really, really like someone, you have to let him go. Yeah. <laughs> I love that line so much. If you really, really like someone, <laughs> Were you in middle school? Yeah, I, I did like him. I thought we had something special. I didn't f*** that editing, by the way. That was their editing. You know, just a little sample of who's behind the show that decided to sideline Tony Cannoli for the remaining episodes. I thought we had something special. Something special meaning he had one nice conversation with him, and then one conversation where he basically said, I'm gonna break up with you, and then another conversation where he says, I'm uncomfortable with you doing sex work. You're gonna change the world, and I wish the world didn't think that. So just... Confusing. I don't know if I would call that special, but okay. I wasn't lying in that green room. <laughs> I'm gonna always support you, okay? Mm. The hell are those shoes, Tony? What the hell? He's got the hype beast emo girl skater. He's got the I chimed in with the haven't you people ever heard? <laughs> Alex, if you're watching this, I think you're a cool guy. <laughs> I came in this house as a little Jersey boy who didn't know much about this world. But you really helped me understand so much. Are you kidding me? He's talked to this guy for one day and half of his interactions were shitty. <laughs> Alex, if you're watching this. <laughs> what does he think? Alex is like fucking Matthew McConaughey in Interstellar? <laughs> Alex, if you're watching this, I think you're a cool guy. I came in this house as a little Jersey boy. But that was episode three, so now let's go on to episode four where he's even more sidelined because his daddy's gone. Now, and you would think that after a situation as intense and focus pulling as that, that he would be even more of the main character. But no. Now really the only thing that we get out of this entire episode of Tony is that one person, Tokyo, finally calls him out for being fake. Are you okay? Do you need help? Uh-huh. If you want, I can get you a doctor. We have we have one on set. I'm just allergic to bullshit and you just feeding it right to me. Oh, wow, man. Well, guess what? <laughs> bon appetit. I think you're allergic to jealousy, my friend. Now, on the one hand, I hate this because nobody should ever talk to Tony that way. But on the other hand, yeah, Tony Cannoli is full of bullshit. His entire life is bullshit. But is it bullshit if that's who he is deep down inside? Because I don't think this is an act. I, I think that Tony is genuinely like this. But they have that little fight at the beginning and then at the end of the episode, they have a little, you know, conversation between each other. There seems to be some miscommunication. I felt attacked. There's a lot on my mind, Tokyo. I had nothing against you, man. It didn't 
I thought we were cool. I thought we were friends. I don't know where it came from. I feel like a dad watching his son in elementary school confront a bully. <laughs> like there's a nervousness in my heart. I'm like, okay, are you gonna say the right things? Are you, are you gonna handle this good? Oh shit, is that empathy? I know of you guys' this situation that you guys had and it really struck a chord with me, you know? And listen, I love your passion. That's one thing I like about you, Tope. What do you think the odds are that anybody ever calls Tokyo Tope? <laughs> By the way, in the face of just getting berated and like, you were mean to my friend and I hate you for it. His response is, I love your passion. If you give me a chance, I'd love to be your friend, dude. I'd love I know. to be your friend too. I just, feel like we are friends. Dude, Come on, I, don't I, let this. I feel like this. What, you're getting my botch body? <laughs> <laughs> and see, this interaction, and I promise you, these interactions, you might be like, oh, but Tokyo's so interesting. He's not as interesting when he's not talking to Tony. Tony brings out, like, something in everybody. Because he is so weird, everybody else around him becomes like elevated. And you would think that that would make the producers say, oh, we should have him like lead this entire series. But just barely any clips. We're at the end of episode four, and this is all we've got of Tony. Furious. Furious. How much Tony do you think we're gonna get in episode five? This is comprehensive, by the way. Well, they introduce a new guy into the show. My name is Joshua. I'm here to build a genuine connection. I'm looking for a guy who will help me chase my dreams, and in return, I would like to help him chase his. I'm sorry, Prince Joshua. <laughs> I'm sorry. Dilf Mansion only has room for one prince, and that's yours truly. And that's all he has in this entire episode. The entire episode, that's all it is. And interestingly, that is the only part of the entire episode that's funny. The way he's talking! I'm sorry, Prince Joshua. <laughs> I'm sorry. Dilf Mansion only has room for one prince, and that's yours truly. That's a crazy line delivery. And it's not a line delivery, it's just him speaking from his heart. The I'm sorry, haha, uh -huh, I'm sorry, is so insanely hard. Sorry that I said insanely hard while I stood up in my crotch was in the camera. But that's episode five's Tony appearance, the entirety. So let's go to episode six. Clearly the romantic, emotional uh, daddy. West side. Like I said, I like fairy tales, and sometimes you have to kiss a few frogs to find your prince charming. Really the only thing that we get out of Tony is him talking about his new partner, the guy who looks like Tupac, and then, you know, they go to voting. And then after that, no Tony, no Tony. It's a sweet, it's a sweet moment, but there's no Tony for the rest of the episode until they get to voting. This is the moment where they're gonna pick a couple to vote out. Jeff, Jeff and Tony. Tony. West side, bad boy kills. We did not vote Jeff and Tony out because we think they're fake. I think Tony's got a bad rap in the house. Oh wow, surprise, surprise. The person who is with their secondary partner is voted out, wow. But, on the plus side, I haven't watched this yet. I am sure we're going to get an emotional monologue out of Tony after he's voted out. This is really what he was put onto the show for. He was put onto the show for this emotional just turning point. I just wish it didn't come so early and with so little before it. God. I came. West side. I came into this house looking for my Prince Charming. I come from a small town where there's not a big gay community, and being in this house full of wonderful queer people like myself. It's really been special. I was gonna make a joke about him saying Prince Charming again, because he seems to have this like fantasy of living in a fairy tale, which he's mentioned over and over and over again in this show. But that is like, I, that felt real. That felt real of him being like, I come from a small town with not a big queer community. And I am sad about that. I'm not a model. I'm not a social media person. I'm a 5'5 five five Italian guy from New Jersey. Um, I'm a 5'5 five five Italian guy from New Jersey. There's no corny joke here. Sometimes you don't have to be a fairy tale prince. Sometimes you can just be that 5'5 five, five Italian guy from New Jersey. How many times are you gonna say you're a 5'5 five, five Italian guy from New Jersey? I'm not editing this. The movements that he's making. I'm a 5'5 five, five Italian guy from New Jersey. I'm a. It's like he's doing a parody. It's like he's making a joke. It's like he's in an SNL comedy skit. He's not acting like he lives like a human. He doesn't feel like he's just like. Everything that he does is so like. He's thinking so hard with every step he takes. That's what it is. And that's why he should have been in so much more of this series. And to end his run though, let's have his ending interview where you get to see who he is kind of behind the camera. This is kind of like behind the scenes, him joking with the producers. Oh, I'm gonna make myself even taller for this one. You fucking bitch. <laughs> I'm a five, seven. <laughs> Be I'm, honest. I'm a 5'6 Italian guy from the- Shut the fuck up, you guys! <laughs> and I love that. That kind of shows you, like, there's a. it's a little bit different than how he is in his interviews. Because in his interviews, he's trying to be something. But then when he's, like, just, you know, talking to the producers behind the scenes, not even thinking about it for the camera, he's still that guy. Just a little bit less looking for my Prince Charming. 
I'm a 5'5 five five guy from New Jersey. <laughs> but this entire video, this entire video has been all of his appearances in this entire show. Do you see why that bothers me so much? And it just shows like a lack of understanding on the producer's part of what would make the show so good. Cause the show itself is kind of not good, but these are so good. And that's why I wanted to really pull all of them out and make a video showcasing the best parts of Dilf Man. Technically for the love of Dilfs. And these sound bites, these clips of him talking will always just like play in my head. These, like he drops so many, I needed the milk, mom. Every single episode. Shower up my friend. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. What are your favorites though? Give me like a ranking in the comments of your like favorite Tony Cannoli lines. I, I have a really nice community of people who watch these videos and I love you all very much. I'm so grateful. Please subscribe. What up weirdos? You see me fade to that outro transition? So sick. How many other YouTubers talk to you through the entire outro? 20 seconds of extra bonus content. Oh, I'm not gonna cut to a little musical thing with some, oh, subscribe, subscribe, a blank screen. No, I'm sitting here, I'm talking to you and I'm getting real. I'm getting vulnerable. I'm putting my actual heart into my hand, giving it to you, then taking a bite out of it then giving it back to you, then taking another bite until I've eaten my entire heart.